The crime you've committed was very serious. And before I sentence you, I'd like to say a few words about your arrest record. What the hell? Yo, the sign is real simple, B. It says wrap it up. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. You know, it's been a really interesting first week of 2020 as far as comics go. You know, Marvel released a lot of new number ones. DC, not so much. And in the indie comics are a little bit more silent. With the, with me to talk about today's, uh, this week's comic offerings is uh, Comics Perch. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on and talking to you again. Always a pleasure. Yeah. So, like I said, you know, a lot of number ones from Marvel Comics. You know, Thor number one, Star Wars number one. Hawkman Freefall number one, Tarot number one, and we also had some some interesting uh, issues of X Men, uh, Marauders, and Daredevil. You know what really stood out for you this week from Marvel Comics? Well, I mean Thor was the big story. I, I mean Thor was a brand new number one, new creative team, highly anticipated team. I think that uh, the Nick Klein art on the book surprised people. I think this isn't a, a household name that a lot of people know. It's it, somebody who's of course worked with uh, Donny Cates before and, and is a, not, not a newbie to the industry, but just not well known. And I think the art really stunned and impressed people. And so that was a book that had a lot of people talking. It was a good quality book and a good launch to a new series. So uh, lots of enthusiasm there. And I think the, uh, the, the other half of the story was really around Star Wars. I think that was the, the other one people maybe came in with lower expectations based on how the, the, the series seemed to kind of you know dwindle off a little bit in its last run. And this one felt like right back, anchored into Empire Strikes Back, a good pivotal moment, answered some questions people had from the movie. So it wasn't right as the movie ended. It was it was kind of sewing itself between a scene at the end of mm -hmm. Empire Strikes Back. And it was, it was a place where people wanted more information. And I think that was another surprise to people. They liked it. A um, lot of good chatter about that. Those two dominated the conversation. And then you hit upon it. The other stuff was was really X Men. Um, it's fascinating to me. I've done videos on this. I'm always continually amazed, week by week, at how some of the news sites will pick apart what Hickman is doing on X Men. And this week it was like, oh, Hickman delivers us a boring lunch. He even has a menu printed in the comic. You know, why can't he deliver something exciting? And the, the comic was great. It was continuing to flesh out the world of Krakoa, how they're going to involve. There was some action in there, good dynamics, um, good stuff. So I think it's, it's another kind of divergence from what some of the reviewers online say and, and what fans are actually interested in. But it was a Marvel week by far. Like I said, DC had some things. There were some indie comics out. But by and large, this was Marvel's week. Yeah, so X-Men number four was interesting. Um the rating on it was, was kind of hurt, you know, because I, I try to rate them. You know, it looked like Lionel's uh, Francis Yu's art was a bit rushed this week, but For the sure. characterization was like off the charts. It was a perfect five out of five. But as far as like story progression, uh, you know, I had to rate it down because not a lot of happened. But man, that that conversation was so tense and just filled with uh, <laughs> with, with so much like drama in there. It, it was really perfectly done. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, you're right. Absolutely. It's not you're not going into that comic going, OK, here's how the story is moving forward a lot. But it is, I think, a comic that a year from now or two years from now, whenever they really kind of ramp up the humans striking back at Krakoa and what the big kind of things that Moira has dealt with in the past in that storyline. I think when those come up, issues like this one are going to make it all the more powerful because it does set the stage of the dynamics of, of the mutants. The fact that we got Apocalypse and Gorgon there and how we're handling them. And some really great lines. I mean, Gorgon's line about, you know, you can take my sword, but you're dumb if you think that's the weapon. Just some mm -hmm. really nice, nice characterization. And this is an issue I think that's necessary to tell the broader story. And so I, I think that's that's really quite solid. Um, I, I wish, you know, on DC's side, I think Justice League Dark uh, told a decent story. I think if you're into that, that was something that was good going on. But it is that kind of quiet week. Next week is going to be the far bigger week with DC, with the, with the Batman relaunch, a number of other things going on. The big misstep, and I know it's a different video you do, was the action comics and kind of how that tied into You're the Villain. That one was the one that just, what the hell? I mean, you're, you're reading that, and that almost set the tone for DC of just starting the year off in this very strange space. Yeah, you know, so DC Comics, you know, the big uh, big – uh, movers and Shakers, or Joker, Harley, Criminal, Sanity 2, Detected Comics, and Action Comics both had issue 1018. Uh, there's an interesting issue of Batgirl, Justice League Dark, and Lois Lane, but wow, did Action Comics set the bar low for 2020. I was I was uh, shocked. Of course, uh, Paley and I are going to be doing a, um, a Worst of the Week video, and 
we're definitely gonna be talking about that. I was I was shocked with the with the the boring, unimaginative origin of Red Mist and then Leviathan's reintroduction and just the dialogue between the scientists. It was off, and and like I said, you'll do your videos, so I you know don't want to take away material from that. But it's it was weird to see how tone deaf that issue was in the context of you know DC is trying and and marketing and promoting and telling everybody, hey, we're getting our stuff together. We're going to have this big event. We have five G, and we have the culmination of this year of the villain storyline. Everything's collapsing together, and then you get a, a comic like this, which it, it comes across. And very much like the, if you go all the way back in time to Civil War, where Mark Miller was doing a similar thing of setting up this brand new world, and you've got Bendis doing tie-ins to it that that come across as if Bendis has not only no interest in the, the bigger event going on, but almost resents it and wants to subtly, I mean, it's too negative, but subtly sabotage it by just doing his own thing and saying, you know, well, my stuff's more important. My villains are more important. My origin story of Red Mist is far more important than whatever's going on with perpetual and all that so i'm gonna put that in it's, it just comes across strange and i don't mean to get negative i mean again you know i, I think the comic if you're bought into the bend storyline you're reading along this is probably good for you because you're not getting interrupted by that bigger thing but in the context of everything dc is putting together it just felt off and it's a shame because i think there are a lot of good things dc is putting into play like i said i think we'll see a lot of next week i think justice league dark is doing a really nice job of being you're the villain but telling its own thing uh, Flash has got a pretty intriguing storyline going on. You mentioned uh, uh, Joker Harley as a you know a, a nice comic going on. There's a, there's a lot terrifics. You know you you've got a bunch of things that are happening that are really quite positive in DC land. Um, Action Comics is a flagship book for them, so it it sets a tone, and that's that's unfortunate. You know you you mentioned Joker Harley Criminal Sanity number two. You know I I, I did. Um, read the very first issue, and the art in that book is is striking. It's it's very unique, you know. It's very photorealistic. I almost like I almost thought, well, they could have hired someone to take these pictures and some actresses. It was that uh, realistic, you know. We we know that there's going to be a creative team uh, change. Do you think that's going to be? Uh, do you think that's going to affect the overall quality? Is it? How can it not? Correct. How can it not? Yeah, I, I I'm disappointed. I was disappointed with that news and. Um, I think what they're doing in terms of the color use in that book, where you have some things in black and white, you use color sparingly, it's striking, it's very, very cool. And I think that will be a continuity thread if you know if the art's changing up, if they're still using that style, I think that's gonna help quite a bit to just keep things consistent. But it's a, it's a shame, because I really do think that's a, it's, I, I, I mean, I'm not a fan. I mean, as people have heard before, I don't like artist changes in general. I, I think I, I long for the 80s where you'd have 40, 60 issue longer runs with an artist and a fill-in artist was actually promoted. Like the, the publisher would say, you know, a fill-in artist is coming in for this issue. Where today you just, you know, every three issues, you just kind of expect that. So I, I, it's a shame that they're they're mixing it up and I hope it doesn't destroy the uh, the comics just kind of visual feel. Because like you said, it's it's a striking book. And I think it's really cool that we've got companies doing books that look very visually different and can be different. It definitely stands out in the crowd. I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. You know, so we, we've talked about Marvel DC, the indie book, you know, the indie scene was a bit quiet this week, you know, from image, you had Philadelphia number two, uh, death and glory eight from the great Rick Remender. Uh, IDW had a number one. I can sell you a body. Um, they also had issues of GI Joe and, and transformers, you know, kind of uh, bigger properties. And then Dark Horse had a number one issue from Ann Nascenti, Ruby Falls, number one. You know, what stood out for you on the indie scene? Well, Death of Glory, for sure. I think um, I, I'm a big fan of Rick Remender, of course. And I think that that was uh, that continues to be a good book, a book that unfortunately is is completely flying under the radar. Nobody knows that exists. Philadelphia is a solid book. Um, I think, I mean, you, you listed the ones. I'm trying to think of other things that came out this week. You know, the first week, uh, the last week and the first week of the year are always quiet. For indies and there just wasn't as much out there um kind of like dc next week you're going to get a lot more hitting the shops and you're just you know you'll see this stuff really start to rank uh crank up a little bit um i have not read it but i've heard good things about uh co-raptor from antarctic i i mean people have said that's that was a uh, surprisingly good i know nothing about it at all i still have yet to pick it up but that's one that i've heard is um you know at least worth looking at mm-hmm 
Uh, so I want to thank you very much, Percy. It was just a quick uh, uh, wrap up of, of this week's comic books. You know, if you're recommending, you know, two or three comics, you know, that if you if someone missed out on this week's batch, what should they be looking for? No, I think I think you got to go see Thor and and check in. I mean, the, the number one launch is Thor and Star Wars. There's far too many number ones coming out of Marvel, but those two are good issues, setting a good tone, setting a universe you probably want. I know that's bad news now to do fan expectation stuff, but if you want to see super powered Thor kicking ass, you're going to get that in Thor. If you want to see uh, a, a more tightly aligned to the to the movies, uh, Star Wars, you're getting that. So you you know those are probably two you really want to pick up. We talked through X Men. I think that's that's really really solid. And um, I, I guess I'll throw it out for the third time. If if horror is your thing and you want to kind of see a very different take on the DC universe, Justice League Dark continues to be a kind of sleeper title that sits there that is doing a lot of creepy, interesting things. And there are some some pretty significant moments in this week's issue. Awesome. And I'll also throw out there that uh, we didn't talk about earlier, but Punisher Soviet number three oh, is one absolutely. of the comics I've ever read in my life. Yes, I can't believe we uh, I forgot about that. That is a great run. It's Garth Ennis uh, doing what he does uh, with the Punisher. And this is, I, I remember we talked about it when it was announced he was going to come on and do this series. And it's, it's very smart for Marvel to put creators who are great with the books are great at. I mean, just just line these things up, and this is an absolutely don't sleep on this. It's a great comic. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks a lot, buddy. I'll talk to you next week. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much much more, you can follow me on Twitter at wes underscore from underscore tc. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.